Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be doing the Turnergy Evolution versus the FR Sky Latency. Now what latency am I going to be doing exactly because there's a lot of latencies where we can do. Uh, what we're going to do is the latency from the point of throttle input all the way down to the receiver and not the motor just yet. The motor we're going to leave it later when I get the Horus and the Spectrum. Uh, those are all coming on the way and we'll do all those together. However right now it's just uh, the latency from the point of throttle input all the way down to the signal on the receiver. So we're gonna see its, its current latency. But before we begin, let's take a look at the difference between the IBUS protocol and the SBUS protocol. Uh, currently we are using the QX7 and we are using Turnergy Evolution here. Uh, the top one is IBUS from the Turnergy Evolution, the bottom one is SBUS from the QX7. Um, as you can see, there's a bit of difference here. Like for example, this one, the line is on the bottom and the signal goes up. But on the IBUS, the, the line is on the top and the signal actually goes negative. So why does it do that? Well, both of them are actually doing the same thing. However, the SBUS has that hardware inverter. So in theory, the SBUS, well not in theory, the SBUS actually looks like the IBUS, but that little IC, uh, that annoying inverting IC flips it upside down. So whatever is positive changes it to negative, whatever is negative changes it to positive, and that's why we have a flipped signal. So, but the order remains exactly the same, just the polarity changes. So if, you know, channel one is positive, channel one will be negative in theory, if that, that makes it a little bit easier. Now let's talk about the frame size and, um, and, and see how long they take. Now we know IBUS, uh, sorry, SBUS takes 9 milliseconds for each frame. So this is exactly one signal, one packet, one frame, whatever you want to call it. So this frame right here, this is the SBUS, takes exactly 9 milliseconds. And we have a dead time of 6 milliseconds and we have a data time of 3 milliseconds. So 6 plus 3 is 9, which is a full frame. So this is 9 milliseconds. Now let's move to IBUS. IBUS has the data in also 3 milliseconds, but the dead time is a bit shorter by 7.7 .7 milliseconds. So, no, no, actually even less. Hold on, let's just double check this here. Sorry about that, I just kind of forgot because um, I have a lot of numbers in my head right now. Okay, let's just quickly check the dead time here. Yeah, so the dead time on SBUS is 6 milliseconds, which is this part here. And on IBUS, it's 4.68 milliseconds. So we could say, yeah, 4.6 milliseconds, 4.7 milliseconds. So it's less by uh, a couple milliseconds. Hold on, let's just get the full frame. So this is, this is the SBUS is slower here. And if we take a full frame of the IBUS here, let's just see, okay. There we go. 7.8 milliseconds. So IBUS, a full frame for IBUS is 7.8 milliseconds and an SBUS signal is 9 milliseconds for a full frame. So the IBUS in theory is faster by uh, 1.2 milliseconds. So the IBUS is faster. That's one thing to note here. However, they both pass the data in exactly the same time. So in theory, uh, we can say 8 milliseconds, 1.2 milliseconds. IBUS is faster than SBUS by 1.2 milliseconds. But that's not the true latency. This is just the update speed of the frame. Now what we're going to do is we are going to take input from the stick all the way down to the signal uh, from the encoder down to the CPU to the RF chipset, whereas these go straightly, straight to the CPU to the chipset. So we're going to do it from these on both the Turnergy Evolution and the QX7. So I'm going to prepare everything right now and I'm going to get started. Alright guys, so the first thing I'm actually going to do to enable me to test the correct, um, to get the perfect, perfect values for testing is what I'm going to do is we're going to be uh, getting the wire from the throttle input, which is, is going to be this one right here, I believe. Yes, this one right here. And just to understand this, black is negative, red is positive, and yellow is the potentiometer, which basically does, it just resists the, so basically the yellow right now, let's just say all the way on the bottom, is reading zero volts, okay? And as we move it up, it starts resisting less voltage, and it'll keep increasing to whatever the max voltage was, which is, let's just say, 3.3. .3. So if it reads 3.3 .3 volts, then it knows it's full throttle. However, what we're going to do is we're going to hijack these uh, wires right here. I'm going to remove the connector and we're going to, I'm going to set up an external switch on this guy right here. I'm going to go look for a little quick switch. 
and what it'll do is this way we can actually get a perfect value 0 to 100 instead of actually doing this with our hand because this is just going to be stupid and every time we're going to get different values and we're going to have no idea what the hell happened so that's not what we're going to do so we're going to rip this off not rip this off just unplug it um do a little hijacking method down here somewhere with a switch thus this way we can actually still go into the encoder that which passes it to the cpu which passes it to the chipset and we get a perfect result or, or good samples this way very consistent hopefully and um that should give us the best uh time for, for latency that's, that's how we're going to know the current time it takes to get processed from the throttle input processed all the way down to the signal and that's what we're going to do right now so quickly i'm going to remove this i'm going to solder a couple wires here and what i'm planning on doing really is um i'm going to see right now which if it's um is it zero volts all the way down or is it maximum 3.3 volts or if it's up it's um uh, also zero volts or 3.3 volts and then um yeah we'll just figure it out and then it'll just get easier i just complicated everything so don't worry i'm gonna set this up right now and then i'll show you how i did it all right guys so let me show you my methodology here before i begin for some of the people out there that understand and for everyone to kind of get an idea if they want to do some kind of their own test here so as you can see i removed the um the throttle here and what I've done is I've changed uh, channel one to uh, to the throttle, so we can actually just check it on the on the signal. It'll be the channel one will be easier to see, and channel one's also going through the encoder because this part's going through the encoder. Now what I have done here is I have removed the connector. I've taken a positive to my breadboard here, and I've taken the potentiometer reading to the breadboard, and I've taken ground to the breadboard just so we can measure for the oscilloscope. So. Let's just take a look here. So this one is ground going to the oscilloscope right there, so it's not going anywhere. This one's ground coming in from the receiver. And this is the potentiometer right here. This is the reading. So if I were to hit it here, it'll ground, which will be zero throttle. And if I were to put it here, it'll go full throttle. And it'll capture our first, um, what is it? Our first signal. And it'll be, it's just perfect. It's just, it's working amazing. So let me just quickly show you how that works. So right now I've set it to zero throttle here. And I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the potentiometer from ground to the voltage that's coming from right there. And then we can get a full reading. So let me quickly show you that. All right, so let's just go ahead. This is going to be, this is the first test. And um, I think it's, it, it works perfect. I just double checked it. So well, right now it's set to listen to once it goes full throttle to capture, um, I don't know, maybe like 200 milliseconds or 50 milliseconds before and 50 milliseconds after or more than that. Uh, we'll see right now. So right now zero throttle and I'm about to stick it into full throttle. And you see that? That's exact. That's a perfect value from zero to 100, which is just that perfect line coming up. So right now it just caught everything right before this happened here. And now we can actually get 10 uh, samples like this and see when it has changed. So I'm going to skip over this boring part here and um, I'm going to quickly uh, just start seeing. So I'm going to take 10 more samples of this and I'll come back and I'll let you guys know uh, what I got here. So this is just the, method the methodology if anyone wanted to do this on their own, uh, you can do the same thing as me. So let me get that done with and I'll be right back. Alright guys, so now it's the turn of the evolution. Now, I've been at this for like an hour just to get the perfect best way and the cleanest result ever because it, it's not working it's more for some reason i get more noise than uh the the fr sky anyways i figured out how to clean it out and um, just made a pretty simple switch here so what i've done is i've took roll access so it's basically throttle because they, they do have encoders for the um for the gimbals here and i took it from right there you can see the middle green one is a potentiometer and this is ground this is positive and what i have done is i've set them up on a switch so it's zero throttle and once i tap it it goes full throttle this way we get perfect result and um let's let me show you how that works real quick it seems that it's more noisy i mean not noisy it has more so far this is the first result i've gotten right now that was clean and so far it seems to be um i think it's going to be more it has more latency so as you can see here now i'm going to click the switch and there it goes, full throttle. But it's everything's backwards for some reason on this. I don't know why. Um, anyways, there we go right here. I'm going to start counting the frames right now. And I'll be right back. Or should we take a look? at? No, I'm just going to skip over this. It'll be a lot faster for everyone. So give me a moment, guys. I'll be back. And then we'll see what couple re after a couple results. I'll come back, update you. And then we're going to come back and then just uh, go over everything. And yeah, and see what's up. So uh, give me a moment and I'll be back, guys. 
All right, guys, so Turnage Evolution, what I'm finding is actually pretty good in latency. Um, it's actually, it's, it's half, it's, it's more, a little bit more, possibly more than half times faster than the FR Sky. So let me show you what's going on here. And um, just to be clear here. Now, as you see this, this is like in instantaneous, just boom, full throttle. So the fr first frame usually goes by with no values change. Second frame, the values get changed, but the third one gets the full change. So usually on the second frame, I'm getting the value changing, and it's actually catching this change here. This is, it's it's pretty insane. But what I'm going is I'm going to the f exact value where we want it because let's say you put it full throttle, you want it to know when exactly it got the command to be full throttle. But this is pretty impressive here. So I wonder what's going to happen when we receive the Horus because this is, and the Spectrum. Um, this thing is just, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed to be honest. Um, I did not expect this at all. So let's actually, let's see this here. So here's a point where we hit full throttle. And, oh shit. All right. And this is where we got our first value change, but it didn't get our first value, the correct value. It's on its way to full throttle, 8.2 milliseconds. And then to get it to when it re got the exact full throttle value, it took 16 milliseconds. Um, the FR Sky, the best I was getting was 30 milliseconds, and it was pretty rare. Uh, usually it would be towards the 40 millisecond area. So this is, um, yeah, like half, two times faster than the... Um, the latency is a lot better on the evolution than the X, uh, QX7. So I'm curious how the QX uh, under the not X, the basic the regular Tyrannus how that's gonna be. I have to get one of those in also, and I have to get well the horse is on the way. So this is this is actually doing pretty well. So let's actually take a screenshot of this. So I'm gonna have all these pictures available, um, somewhere. I'll probably make a zip file or something, or show it to you while I'm making the video. Um, but this is, um, yeah, it's, it's noticeably faster. It's, it's usually catching it by the third frame here. And the frames are even shorter. The frames are 7.8 milliseconds. So this is, this is very good here. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to do more tests now and just get more data so we can average it out. So here's another example. Um, basically, we hit full throttle on during the incoming of one of the frames, okay? So you'd expect this to have no values change, but the first frame even has a value change of somewhere between here. And then on the second frame here, where we got our first actual value. So this is the best uh, latency test I've gotten, I think, so far on this. So let's actually measure this here. Um, I'm, I must say I'm pretty impressed. Um, I do not expect this. So we're going to be doing a gimbal mod on this then. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get some M7 and M9 gimbals. I don't know which ones are bigger and which ones are smaller. So it's 14 milliseconds. 14 milliseconds is the best so far I've gotten on the Turnergy Evolution. Um, it's it's pretty consistent, really. Um, so it's basically like two and a half frames here, in a way. Or like it was like a half frame, one frame, and on the third frame we got the full value. But we even got a value change here. So that's that's pretty good, actually. And what kind of processor is it using? Uh, I can't see it from here, but um, yeah, well, it's processing very well, actually. Uh, this is very good. So, yeah, okay, let me finish up, and we will figure out the final results. Sorry for all those noises, because everything's on, so I'm going to take another screenshot here, because we need this guy. Okay, so let me do a couple more tests, and I'll be back once we're done. Alright guys, the results are in and they're pretty surprising actually, I did not expect this. Um, okay, so let's just talk about average. Uh, I took seven samples uh, of each and uh, averaged it upon seven samples. So the FR Sky here, the QX7, got an average of, we could say average of 36 milliseconds. And the Turnigy Evolution got an average of 14.6 milliseconds. So it's, 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 it's two times faster than this guy. Um, it encodes the input a lot faster than this one does. And there was times where, you know, basically this one's by the third frame and this one's by the fifth frame. Four to five frames, it picks up the new values. This one, some on the second frame, or sometimes even the first frame that's coming up after the input, it has the value 
um, changing, but not to the full value. And then on this frame right after it. So this is this one's a lot faster than the QX7. And but yeah, by the way, I'm running this on D16 eight channels. So just just if anyone wanted to know. Um, however, the, the Eternity Evolution um, in, in is, is faster, twice as fast actually. So let's talk about the best of each. This one, the best result I've gotten was 30.6 milliseconds, and this is the best on this. I got 11.8 milliseconds. That's what 20 milliseconds difference between them. That's that's a pretty long time, I think. Um, now, the worst results. Uh, this one, the FR Sky got 41.2 milliseconds, and the Eternity Evolution got 17.5 milliseconds. So it's it's still a hell of a lot faster. Um, it's, it's it's a lot faster actually. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the gimbal mod on this guy just to kind of improve him since um, the latency is just uh, pretty cool actually. Uh, this is very good I guess in latency perspective, but uh, maybe after we do the mod, we become a little bit better and then hopefully maybe they'll release a new update. But this is just crazy. So this got me thinking. Well, if this is fast, how fast is this guy? This is the FS i6 X. And if he proves to be as fast as Eternity Evolution, that's just going to be crazy. So uh, we're going to be I'm going to be doing this as soon as I get time. Hopefully, maybe tonight um, I, I get I get some time to do this, and I'll just upload it very quick. If not, then it'll just be in the next episode or something. Um, but this is well so far perspective of latency. The Evolution uh, beats the FR Sky QX7 by half. So we really need to get an X9D, uh, which is the regular Tyrannus, the old one that everyone has, and the Horus is on the way. And I'm going to rip the QX7S apart and see if it's the same internals. If it's not the same internals, then I'll also test that as well. Maybe it has a little bit better latency than this guy. And I'll also be getting the TBS Crossfire soon. I'm trying to save up for it. Um, if TBS is watching or Team Black Sheep is watching, hey, if you guys would like to send one over, that would be super awesome. Or if anyone knows anyone in, in Team Black Sheep, you know, if, if you can talk with them and see if they could send one over and we could do some latency testing on that as well see where it actually gets put in this whole equation here um and well that's it guys so that's gonna really conclude it for this video um i really hope you guys enjoyed it and i really hope you guys learned something and um if you really do like the content please leave a like and subscribe and uh leave an awesome comment and um you know if you could also have affiliates links down there this helps support the channel and um, I could just keep, you know, doing this through and have this channel support itself. Everything I make from the channel goes straightly back to the channel. Um, I, don't, I don't keep anything of it. I have a job. I, just, I have my own cash. But, um, yeah, any help goes a really long way. And I really want to just keep doing stuff like this. And to be honest, I would really love it for it to turn out to be a full-time job one day. So uh, that is my goal. And I do love doing this. And, and it's, just, it's just super awesome um and um yeah i'll keep bringing you stuff like this very soon so i really hope you guys enjoyed it and if you guys have any questions or any suggestions feel free to let me know and i will see you next time see you guys take care